Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and what I'm making today. Um, I'm going to make a dug-in panther. Um, why? Well, I was recently looking through some uh, reference material, some old World War II photographs, and I came across a really, really cool picture of a, a dug-in panther tank in Berlin in 1945. These are essentially sort of dug into streets and they were built up with um, bricks, masonry, earth, mud, dirt, etc. To give you some like a really really sort of easy to build bunker uh, sometimes just the turret was used uh, what i'm going to be doing is using the, the the turret and the hull of the panther and making it sort of dug into the street um, so what i thought i'd do is to do a very short video to plot my progress through this so what i'm going to do is run through the materials i'm going to be using i'm going to go away and build it come back show you what the sort of the dry build looks like and then go away and paint it and then show you the, the overall result so what bits and pieces are we going to be using in this in this, um, this dug-in panther build? Well, we can't go anywhere without this. Now this is a it's a plastic panther kit from Warlord Games. I've already built two panthers for my, my late war Germans and the chance of me ever actually using three are slim to zero. So I thought I'd put this to good use. Um, it's gonna be mounted on my standard uh, cork with card backing to give it a nice, nice bit of um, stability. But I do love working with cork as as many, 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 many videos will testify to, I use it quite a lot. So what else have we got? So we've got bits of spare sprue here. Now these are gonna be um, chopped up and used as individual bricks. Um, really, really good way of recycling your old sprue. We've got some um, some uh, all-purpose filler or spackle as it's sometimes called. Um, again, what another one of my, my go-to materials. I absolutely love working with this stuff. Very, 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 very versatile and very, very cheap into the bargain. I've got lots and lots of uh, cork offcuts. I'll be using again as bits of broken masonry, broken walls, um, just to build up that the, the sort of the mound around the tank. I've got some um, sort of commercially available um, plaster. These are, these are plaster, sort of large large bits of masonry, large bits of brick. I'll be using those. Uh, big bag of kitty litter, um, not used. That would be that would be vile. Um, just thought. I'd just thought I'd throw that one out there. But I've used it in the past, it's really, really good. Gives some really good <clears throat> irregular looking rocks. Uh, some other more coarse um, grit type stuff I've used in the past. Um, wood glue, I always use wood glue um, for things like this. But I will also be using super glue and um, PVA as well. So many, many types of glues being used in this project. So what I'm gonna do now is go away and build the thing, uh, come back, and show you what I've done. So I shall see you after I've completed my build. So see you soon. And welcome back. So I finished the initial part. So as you can see, looks a bit, looks a bit, a bit of a dog's dinner at the moment. So I'll just tell you very briefly what I did. So the I cut a piece of cork board up to size and then kind of roughed the edges out as I'm as I normally do with with cork board. Um, the panther, I've done it very, very basically. So um, all that's on here is the hull, half of the um, the rear, and the turret. Uh, what, what I've done, I've filed the tools off um, because, well, there wouldn't there wouldn't be tools on a panther that's dug into a Berlin street. Let's put it that way. Um, what I then did was used offcuts of um, cork to build up sort of a layer around the tank, and then used a um, the poly uh, the filler to just mold around the hull to create a just to create a, a kind of a feeling of you know lots of lots of rubble just and then just it was quite quick to do i then added bits of chopped up sprue to uh, look like bricks uh, in between the bricks i gave it a coating of um, it's just a, a very fine um, grit and I've added bits of the commercially bought uh, bricks and some balsa wood to represent timbers. And that's it. So I'm in two minds at the moment. I'm going to leave this, leave this to fully dry overnight. Because while, while it is dry, I don't, what I don't want to do is start painting while it's still a bit spongy. So I'm going to leave this to dry, to dry fully overnight. But I don't know what to do with the base. Do I leave it like that? And then I'm just going to add grit on kind of the, the card area just to blend into the rest of it. Do I turn it into an oval and just concentrate on the, the overall you know, top part? Do I build up walls along the side to make it look like it's in some kind of courtyard? Um, 
like I say, I'm in, I'm in two minds at the moment. What I'm going to do is just let this dry completely overnight. And when I come back, it will be fully painted. So I shall see you all in the next part of the video. Bye bye for now. Welcome back and it's finished. This is the completed dug in panther tank. As you can see, it's looking rather fetching. I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. What we're gonna do, um the end of the video there'll be a a bit of a, a bit of a montage um of photographs. Uh, what what I did was I took photographs um throughout every single stage of the build. Um and I've just popped that into a very short montage to be put played at the end of the video. Can't promise any any montage music though. I couldn't I couldn't quite find any. Um but I'll just talk you through what I've done. So there we go, it's finished. And this didn't take didn't take that long to put together. But as you'll see, it absolutely it works. It it it, it does the job that I wanted it to do. It's, it's a dug in panther tank. So what what did I do? So in the last part of the video, it was um, leaving it to dry overnight um, while the individual so the, the bricks and the timber. Uh, the next stage was just was just painting. Um, so I've, I've chose the, to keep the bricks a sort of um, not all the same colour to give it a bit of um, I don't know, a bit of randomness. I don't. I can imagine when they were building the, the debris up against these things, they were just grabbing bricks and you know timbers from all over the place. So that's what I've done. I've just used different colours. So the, the grey ones are quite, it was quite heavily dry brushed. Um, and then I went in with just different colours to pick out the timbers and the different coloured bricks. Um, after that, it was just a case of painting the um, painting the, the actual tank, which is done really, really quickly. And I used a different colour this time. Normally when I, I paint German armour uh, in late war, for the Dunkelgelb um, sort of base, I sometimes use um, sort of German camo, camo beige or um, a lighter brown. For this, I actually went for, you bear with me a second, I actually used Vallejo yellow green as the base. Um, for the camouflage, it was very simple. It was just, the green was a 50-50 mix, a mixture of uh, Vallejo German field grey and bronze green. The browns are just uh, Vallejo burnt umber. And then I did on this what I did on my uh, my, my jungle Sherman which was the wash was a combination of three different Citadel washes. So it was, a, it was a, 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 an equal mix of Agrax Earth Shade, Athonian Camo Shade and uh, Reichland Flesh Shade all mixed together and just slopped all over the armor. And that was it. Um, most of the actual highlights and weathering were done with um, weathering pigments. I used Vallejo weathering pigments um, all over the model, well not all over, that would be ridiculous, but <laughs> I used it sparingly, but more than I would normally use on when I, if I was weathering a model. So I actually put it over the um, the debris, just to break up that grey a bit. Um, I also used it all over the tank, so it, I mean, what, these are going to get covered in dust and, and all kinds, being out, being out in the street in the middle of combat. But I think the the application of the weathering pigments really dulled those paints down and gave, gave it gives the tanker a sort of worn look looks a bit a bit more a bit more lived in or fought in as it were uh, for the base i actually went a bit simple um as you'll see i've just kept the plain card base i've not built up any any grit on it i didn't want to, de to detract away from um the the actual model itself in fact i was chatting with um lee from the um battle bunker gaming blog um on our facebook group um about the basing um and i said i was in two minds about how to build the size of walls and add all kinds but he was like no that might it, it, it would have did, possibly detracted away from the actual build so i'm glad that i i stuck with just keeping it very simple but there we go a rather rather quick dug in panther that i'm absolutely super chuffed about uh, massive apologies to all the people that follow me on instagram 
that um, I had to put up with my my constant updates during the day when I was building this. But it was just such a such an involved build. I really really did enjoy it. It's one of those one of those builds that when you when you you start you just want to keep keep going and carrying on and carrying on. And I, I flew through this a lot quicker than I, I really thought I did. So apologies if people if people found my updates slightly over overpowering but there were some nice comments um on there so thanks thanks for everyone that follows me on, follows me on instagram um but there we go that's the finished the finished dug in panther so what i'm gonna do now is uh, there'll be a montage at the end of the video i keep saying montage it's just a collection of photographs really uh, that outlines um how i built this thing uh but if you've got any comments or questions uh just leave them down below and i'll certainly respond to all comments and questions uh, in the description of the video, you'll also find a link to our Facebook group, so feel free to march on over there and join the Facebook group. Um, but as always, thanks for watching, do take care, may your dice roll well, and I'll catch you all in the next video. So, bye-bye for now.